Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard. In this episode, we'll demonstrate how to create an artificial neural network using a sequential model from the Keras API integrated within TensorFlow. In the last episode, we generated data from an imagined clinical trial. And now we'll create an artificial neural network for which we can train on this data. All right, so first things first, we need to import all of the TensorFlow modules that we'll be making use of to build our first model. And that includes everything that you see here, except for actually the last two of Atom and categorical cross entropy. <laughs> categorical cross entropy, rather. Uh, those two are going to be used when we train the model, not when we build it, but we're going ahead and bringing all the imports in now. And then next, if you are running this code on a GPU, then you can run this cell, which will allow you to make sure that TensorFlow is correctly identifying your GPU, as well as uh, enable memory growth. And uh, there's a few lines on the blog where you can check out uh, what exactly that means and why you might want to do this. But if you are running a GPU, then go ahead and run this cell. So next, this is the actual model that we are building. This is a sequential model. And that is kind of the most simplest type of model that you can build using Keras or TensorFlow. And a sequential model can be described as a linear stack of layers. So if you look at how we're creating the model here, that's exactly what it looks like. So we are initializing the model uh, as an instance of the sequential class, and we are passing in a list of layers here. Now, it's important to note that this first dense layer that we're looking at, that is actually the second layer overall. So this is the first hidden layer, and that's because the input layer we're not explicitly defining uh, using Keras. The input data is what creates the input layer itself. So the way that the model knows what type of input data to expect or the shape of the input data rather is through this input shape parameter that we pass to our first dense layer. So through this, the model understands the shape of the input data that it should expect. And then therefore it accepts that shape of input data and then passes that data to the first hidden layer, which is this dense layer here in our case. Now we are telling this dense layer that we want it to have 16 units. Uh, these units are also otherwise known as nodes or neurons. And the choice of 16 here is actually pretty arbitrary. This model overall is very simple. And um, with the arbitrary choice of nodes here, it's actually going to be pretty hard to create a simple model, at least, that won't do a good job at classifying this data, just given the simplicity of the data itself. So we understand that we're passing in or that we're specifying 16 units for this first hidden layer. We are specifying the input shape so that the model knows the shape of the input data to expect. And then we are stating that we want the ReLU activation function to follow this dense layer. Now, this input shape parameter is only specified for our first hidden layer. So after that, we have one more hidden dense layer. This time, we are arbitrarily setting the number of units for this dense layer to be 32. And again, we're following the layer by the activation function ReLU. And then lastly, we specify our last output layer, or our last layer, which is our output layer. This is another dense layer, uh, this time with only two units, and that is corresponding to the two possible output classes. Uh, either a patient did experience side effects or the patient did not experience side effects. And we're following this output layer with the softmax function, which is just going to give us probabilities for each output class. Um, so between whether or not a patient experienced side effects or not, we will have an output probability for each class, letting us know which class is more probable for any given patient. And just in case it's not clear, this dense layer here is what we call a densely connected layer or a fully connected layer, probably the most well-known type of layer in, um, in artificial neural networks. Now, in case you need any refresher on fully connected layers or activation functions or anything else that we've discussed 
up to this point, then just know that all of that is covered in the Deep Learning Fundamentals course if you need to go there and refresh your memory on any of these topics here. All right, so now we'll run this cell to create our model. And now we can use model.summary to print out a visual summary of the architecture of the model we just created. So looking here, we can just see the visual representation of the architecture that we just created in the cell above. All right, so now we have just finished creating our very first neural network using this simple and intuitive sequential model type. In the next episode, we will see how we can use the data that we created last time to train this network. By the way, we are currently in Vietnam filming this episode. If you didn't know, we also have a vlog channel where we document our travels and share a little bit more about ourselves. So check that out at the Blizzard Vlog on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode, along with other resources available on deeplizzard.com. And check out the Deep Lizard Hive Mind, where you can gain exclusive access to perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.